6.01 p.m. Thank you. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Thank you. All right, I'm hearing none. So we'll move forward. Um, we normally skip um, assigning times or timekeepers. So um, we will continue with that tradition and move forward. Um, do we have any public comments at this time? Hearing none, we'll move forward to the consent agenda. Before us, we have the minutes of our Tuesday, September 21st regular meeting. I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. All in favor of approving the minutes of September 21st, 2021, please say aye. 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 Peggy, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. I'll say aye. aye. All right, thank you. <laughs> and the minutes are approved. Um, do we have any board comment this evening? Hearing none, we can come back to that if somebody wants to jump in later and comment. Um, so we can move on to reports to the board, um, which we get in such a timely manner. It's nice. Thank you. Uh, so good evening. And uh, you have my report in hand. Um, I don't know if any of you took the time I also did a video out to the community on Friday. Um, I don't really have a ton more to add other than the report and that video. Um, I do believe there's also going to be an editorial this week um, in the Herald um, from me that's going to be speaking um, just to the work that we're doing in regards to COVID-19. Um, and again, just to reach out and thank all of our educators who I think have been working incredibly hard I think when you look at the academic data, there's some real celebrations that the principals will point out to you tonight. Um, you know, when you stop, pause, and think about um, the fact that we've been still growing and moving forward as an organization, um, even in the midst of the pandemic, I think there's a ton to celebrate. And so um, I'm just really proud of all the folks' work. and. Uh, and, um, you know, we're in the thick of budget season. Tonight, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. That's just a first draft. Uh, just on student support, you'll start to get a much bigger picture next month. Um, so we're prepared to share that with you, too. And I'll take any questions folks have. Any questions for Jamie Carney, our superintendent? Okay, hearing none, we'll move forward to the principal's report. Thank you. Uh, as you know, there's three of us, but I would just jump in on the uh, <clears throat> on the first goal and how we um, reacted to that. One of the pieces was we're using um, something called DataWise step-by-step -step guide, and we're working with the UVEI, the Upper Valley Educators Institute, and there's not just the administrators, there's a bunch of teachers, interventionists, and SU-wide, but we're looking internally using those those um, concepts to look at our data and work to improve academic, social, emotional. So we actually have one of those, we're taking a course, I think there's like eight, eight sessions and number two is, or number three is uh, this Thursday. So, awesome. You want to talk about flexible pathways, Reed? Yeah. So uh, as you have heard before, we're working on flexible pathways. Uh, we've got a bunch of students who are in uh, some alternative uh, learning programs with their unique plans this year, uh, many more than in the past. So it's uh, exciting to be increasing our capacity to do that. Um, we uh, are also working on our parent uh, student teacher conferences coming up uh, in just three weeks. So. Um, two things that are going on. Yeah, and I think that could lead into goal three. Do you 
Well, same thing. I can. Why don't you do that, and then I'll launch it to the uh, chat report. Okay. So, <clears throat> in goal three, that's the community outreach and connections piece. The parent-teacher conference is a natural built-in one, right? The way that we're working on that, the older the kid gets, the more they run the conference. And it's not like your parents or grandparents' conference. It really is driven by the kid, the older they get. And so, as an example, in the middle school, we are taking time in our pod work to have kids develop those conferences and to use the structure that we use every day in our advisory which is a big slide with multiple links, and the kids will present those and walk their parents through those pieces. We also have agreed upon a whole, uh, the week of uh, November 8th, which is a short week for us. We have a Veterans Day in there, and then there's a comp day for teachers to do conferences. So we're trying to have everybody do the conferences in the same batch, so families can pay attention to that, and, and it works for them, okay? One more piece about the community outreach piece, and um, <clears throat> we now have share with the SU a communications coordinator, uh, Kate McLean. She's doing a great job. She's met with us several times, and we're talking about how do we use social media better, how do we use our newsletter better, and also she's going to be organizing that there's a regular section in the Herald for, for schools, not just ours, but for the SU. Those are some updates on community mm -hmm. outreach. You wanted to then transition into the We've data? Got a, well, 8.1 data. Oh, yeah. okay, sorry. I thought it was a task. But you can lead on that down there. Yep. Unless you want to add anything up here. No, I think we, I think we got knocked it. Knocked out of time. Good. Any questions? We're happy to have them today or tonight or another time. All right, hearing none, we'll move forward um, to our business manager's report. Good evening, everyone. You have my report. The update I'll provide on the FY21 audit is that the audit was finished in person last week, and the auditors continue to complete what needs to be done remotely, and current projection is to have the drafts the third and fourth week of November. And if anyone has any questions. Any questions? All right, thank you very much. We will move on to the policy committee update, which I guess is me. Um, so the policy committee um, it looked at a new draft, it's not it is and isn't a substantive change from our previous draft. Um, Glenn Wiley um, from Stratford pulled out everything that was a procedure because um, we had some feedback from Don Shaw from Sharon about the fact that our policies should not contain procedures and we felt that just kept things cleaner. So we agreed to that, which led to some diff definitions being moved around within the policy, just because in terms of formatting, that made the most sense. So substantively, it's the same policy, um, but it is a, are we on the fifth draft now? It is a Call fifth it the draft. draft okay. Um, we, we continue to hear um, from some voices, and I should say they're really the same voices who um, show up at our policy committee meetings with concerns about moving forward with the policy. From Bethel and Royalton, the feedback that I continue to receive and I think other board members continue to receive is that it is a really important policy for us to move ahead with. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything else that I should add. You were at the meeting too. Yeah, no, I mean, I'll just add the, the, um, the plan was for the full board to take this up on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, we need 10 days in the paper to mm -hmm. adopt policy, and so we're not going to make mm -hmm. that deadline due to when the policy committee met. So I think at the full board, we're going to need to talk about if we want to do a special meeting in a wagon wheel, mm -hmm. possibly, to take up the policy work, um, because we also did look at a revision in another policy. And so we're going to have that discussion Monday night. Okay. And we have done policy that way in the past. 
uh, at least under my tenure, and it's worked well because we did get it warned and all adopted the same evening. Mm -hmm. So I think we just got to feel that out. There's been a lot of comment and discussion on it, so you know what I mean? Like, I feel like a wagon wheel might be a way that we could do that. Okay, Chris? Thank you. Yeah, I would just say that I think, yeah, a wagon wheel or something like that would be good to, to get it done. Uh, I don't know. I, I've been in some of those meetings where Don brought up that concern, uh, but uh, I guess, you know, for me, I went back and looked it up, like, for, for me, where I work, you know, for the Vermont State Colleges, every policy includes procedure uh, with it, too. And I did some research, and it looks like it's like 50-50. Some people say you should do it. Other people say you shouldn't. So, uh, but if, you know, I guess none of our other policies really include procedure. So I guess we're staying consistent with what our other policies look like. But personally, for me, I was fine with procedures being in there just so that then it was clear for everybody. But... That's fine. Thank you. Any other feedback on the policy committee work? All right, that brings us to our student. I'll office. just say really okay. quickly, I think if we're not gonna include procedures there, we need to make it very clear where they are, um, especially on a policy like this that has had some controversy so that everyone's on the same page if something happens and knows exactly where to look. Okay. Okay. Grace, our student report. Okay. Um, so student council has brought up three topics to bring up. Um, first one, we had a good turnout for our first dance of the year. It was around 40 students. We did not charge for it since it was the first dance of the year, so it had to be free. But looking at that, um, we should probably get some good revenue from the first dances in the future. Um, second one is the Lead Up <coughs> program that is at our school now. Um, kids in student council think it's very beneficial, but would like in the future maybe for it to be um, taught at a whole school level and not just in small groups like it is now. We know due to COVID that that's why it's in small groups, but maybe in the future, if we can figure it out to have it maybe during like a morning meeting or a, an assembly or something. Mm. Um, and then third is the Viro Valley High School Performing Arts Center. Um, I'm on the planning committee for that as well. So um, this is the um, layout that we have agreed upon. Um, yeah, can it can you see on the screen? Um, so the banding courts room now are uh, the same space as it will be shown on here um, in the Performing Arts Center, but it is very small now, so this will be almost 3,000 square feet in size, um, and it'll be a great um, improvement from what we have now. Um, there'll be extra storage, there'll be um, toilets and bathrooms in the area as well, with some gym storage still available attached to the gyms we have now. Um, I think there's a new walkway to get to the area um, as well so kind of hard to, to see there this yeah. this was just delivered to us late friday by the architect um and in, in regards to feedback we gave him on wednesday afternoon at our last committee meeting so sorry we i don't have a drawing other than this uh, to share with you and that's why it's uh, just kind of popping up here mm -hmm. but yeah. it, so it sounds like a good future agenda item too and there was a grant that that allowed the planning of this to happen and then whether or not the the building renovation moves forward is something that will be taken up in the future correct yeah so so we'd like to ask the the board from the, the performing arts committee uh, if we could have a half hour of the board's time at our december meeting to have the architect come in and present the proposal to you Mm -hmm. uh, our our intention is to do development work privately mm -hmm. and try to try to raise the money through a grant. Mm -hmm. uh, we we've got a conservative estimate of about a million and a half dollars for this, um, but that's based on current uh, COVID pandemic level square foot pricing. So we think it'll probably come in a little bit uh, lower than that, and that, that's just a back of the napkin <coughs> calculation. Mm -hmm. But uh, essentially, what we'd be 
be doing is dramatically increasing the amount of space available uh, for our music program to practice both in small practice rooms and in a, a group room that's a little bit more fitting to a high school music program. Um, it's hard to see this diagram from, from where you're sitting if you're remote, uh, but this would go in front of the original gym to the building. So where there's grass now mm -hmm. and out into the bus loop that's there is where we would get the 3,000 square feet of space uh, we need for this practice room. Um, and it would, would build off of uh, entryway to the stage, so it would be part of the whole performing arts piece so that it would be easy to move equipment from the band room right onto the stage for musical performances. Um, and there are a lot more detail to that and uh, benefits to that. We could probably go on and on to <laughs> all the meetings it's exciting. Had, but, uh, just to let you know that this is in the works and we have a plan to bring to you uh, a well-developed proposal from the architect in two months. Thank you. So this doesn't include then like a, a dedicated performance space or auditorium. It's just expansion. Correct. I, I'm sorry, I can't see the picture from here, so. Yeah, it, it doesn't include a performance space, but it it is to include a facelift for the existing performing art space. So in our last walkthrough around the building, for example, we talked about, well, what can we do about this, um, this basketball backboard that drops down in front of the stage? Mm -hmm. Could we replace it with something a little bit more modern that, that would get out of the way? Um, you know, what, what kinds of risers or different seating can we provide in a storage space that might be able to be wheeled out to make the space feel like more than a gym? Uh, when we have a concert. Mm -hmm. um, it would also give a significant facelift to the front of the building uh, with a new entryway that would be at the corner of where the old gym meets the new gym. So uh, somewhat of a fancy entrance way that would bring people into the, the performing space on the night of a concert and allow people to park in the front or back of the building and come through a, an entrance into the back of the, the theater or stage area. Uh, as opposed to walking in through a narrow corridor past what used to be locker rooms to, to get here. Mm -hmm. so. right. is it, can you uh, can you send out a digital version of that or? Uh, yeah, I'll work on getting a uh, digital version out for y'all. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You get everything great? I think so. That's all we have. That was your report. Yep. Thank you. That's exciting. Okay, task force updates, please. Yeah, um, so Andrew and Andra and Renee Hinton and I met uh, two weeks ago. Yep. And we have another meeting, I believe, coming up on 21st. On Monday. I don't Is remember. Is this coming Monday or the Monday after? It may might be the Monday after due to soccer. Um, and um, what we articulated was really, we've got a pretty good work plan to come to forward to you as a board to talk about a proposal to have kind of a two-year plan to really increase our programming for pre-K students. Um, and look at it in regards to a phase around, are we meeting their needs academically right now during the school day, right? Like, is that the type of program we wanna have? Do we wanna expand that? and also looking at child care um, that expands from before school to after school and then also uh, looking into providing more child care programming in the summer um, and looking to use a model around charging subsidy mm -hmm. um, for for aftercare um, to help fund the positions to make that possible and so the that group is jumping right on board with that and yeah, we uh, emailed uh, or reached out to pre-K parents to see if we could get some parents to be on the, the committee, and we already had somebody raise their hand for that. I think we have somebody joining us from Magic Mountain as representation. Um, so I think it'll be great to hear their voices and perspectives, too. So I expect some surveys to go out um, to continue to gather feedback around need, mm -hmm. um, although it does seem like the need's definitely there yeah. um, based on other feedback we've gathered. So I think we're gonna be looking to come to you this year for what that means for the budget for next year. 
Um, and then what might that mean for the budget for the year after? I think we're looking at like maybe a two-phase plan, potentially. So if that's exciting. And then the other task force was the uh, recruitment, recruitment. Yeah. and, and um, outreach group. Yeah. And that has Shannon, Owen, and I on it, yeah. and Kate and Owen. Go for it. Sure. And Shannon, join in as you like. Um, <clears throat> we had a very good, robust meeting in our first gathering, and uh, we have some great ideas, and that we are looking at how do we, how do we develop a, a not just like a one-time thing, but a culture of, of celebrating who we are and using students to help. So we've talked about... Grace, she wasn't there, but uh, that we might use some school board members. And there's two middle school students who are developing a video about the middle school experience. And I think we could probably push that also into the high school and, and sh really share like that, what that looks like. And we talked about reaching out to those communities very specifically, so that, that have sending um, what are they sending rights or privileges or mm -hmm. they they need school to choose school. a school and one of the things we have is some kids that are attending our school in the middle school that are loving it that we think might be able to talk to other s students in the mm -hmm. sending school so those were some ideas right and and uh, Kate McLean was going to put together some some ideas and so we would have some stuff that would be media ready so that task force is meeting again in yeah. two weeks. And we also, just so you know, uh, ran with the concept on that task force and membership. We have two other district principals joining because we felt like we needed to get some buy-in and investment from sending school di district principals to assist us this work with this work. And then we're also reaching out to get uh, some more community input too from sending school districts. Be, and there was another initial idea of holding some just drop-in forums as a task force to gather information from our sending towns about what is it that parents are looking for, mm -hmm. right? Like what, is, like what is it that you're looking for when you, when you think about what's going to be a great school choice for your child? Um, and so we're going to gather some of that feedback, feedback to make our lar longer-term plan as well. This group also, though, is know that we're continuing to talk about, too, around outreach, just about our different modes of communication. Um, and behind the scenes, I think it was mentioned earlier, but there is discussion around how to make uh, certain our Facebook is painting a narrative for the entire pre-K-12 system. Mm -hmm. I feel like right now we do a good job of giving a narrative at the middle school. I think we can do a better job at our elementary and high school. I think we have a lot of great things going on that we need to really showcase. So that work is happening behind the scenes. Also, uh, we are due for a facelift on our website, and that work is underway as well, um, just so you folks know. So um, we'll continue to meet and, and work on those areas. All right. Yeah. Good. It was a good meeting. Great. All right. Our fall academic report. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think that there is a lot of great stuff to celebrate. So we wrapped up our universal screenings of all of our kiddos. Um, and it kind of lists out on the top all the different screenings we do for different ages. Um, and I think this is the first time that it's like the beginning where this is everyone's back in school so this is a nice baseline report about how how are the children this is how they are um, and I think it's a lot to celebrate with all the good work our teachers have done over the last challenging bit of time to keep our kids learning um, because if you if you look at the skill scores we're, we're making some gains or we're doing it's not too bad right especially given that this is our first baseline um, data report. So um, I just want to remind everybody that we've got a new math program that we just started launching so uh, on the both elementary campuses. So this is really year one for us as far as rolling that out. Um, so while I think math doesn't look too bad, I have high hopes for how it's going to look in the future as we continue to work together with 
professional development around it um, and training for teachers and as, as the kids get more used to it. Uh, and I think as we dig into it a little bit too, being this is like year three of the literacy work and we know we're, ever, we're always working on it. It's not, um, it's never done, even though we just have had a lot of training. You know, we know right now we are working a lot more on the phonics work and the word work and kind of digging into how we're doing that and to do it a little bit better and a little different. And I think we're seeing some gains coming from that as well. So I think what my feeling is, is it's a big kudos to the teachers and all the hard work and carrying us and carrying the kids through through this learning. So, so I would uh, I want to talk a little bit about the middle school and how how it's uh, panned out. And I would agree with Andra, and we were talking about it today, a group of us in that literacy seems to be bearing fruit in the pandemic, which, you know, this is back from summer and back at business, and we had kids take these assessments right away, and we have a little growth there in literacy, and, and I'll focus on the middle school piece, and we also know that if you compare us to the state, that we are also very much like the state in the middle school, mm -hmm. except switching to math now, we see that we have some work to do there. And I don't think our hair is on fire or we don't have a crisis, but we have been approaching this in the model, like Andrew was saying, of a continuous improvement mindset. So here we are, we have now a, a match set of programming in the middle school, in the elementary school with Envision. And we need to look at, I believe, our middle into high school math programming. Because if you read, I don't want to take a thunder, but when they get up into the high school, they start to catch back up mathematically in the scaled scores. Mm -hmm. So we're, um, we're excited to work on this and we're excited to have some math focus this year. We have several teachers taking a class, math as a second language, and we also have some uh, money set aside in title money to support this work, whether it's professional development or looking at programming or looking at tech, ex technical experts that can help us. And, and I would also add the data wise work we're doing that focuses you. on math. So yeah. even today when we met about the data wise and how to look at the data and how to use the data and that whole process, it's with the lens of like, okay, what is the math data point that we're gonna hone in on as a whole school to focus on? So I think that's exciting as well. And if you just noticed, Andra was putting me down, shutting me back down so Reed could have some time to talk. <laughs> In the nicest of ways. Is that what was happening? No. Uh, could you scroll up just a little bit, Ray? So as you're looking at your report, one of, the, and maybe this is because I'm partially red, green, colorblind, but when I look at this, the orange really pops. And I say, oh my gosh, we're not even 50% proficient in reading. My goodness, what, what's going on here? Uh, the orange color is the number of students who are not meeting expectations. Mm -hmm. So we're actually at about two-thirds of students who are at uh, grade level expectations or above. So the story in, in reading, and this is, this is true uh, all the way through the grades, that the literacy work we've been doing over the last three years has been paying off. Mm -hmm. and, and we're seeing that the majority of our students are proficient or above uh, in reading. And our focus now turns to math. And you can see when we look at the scale score, we're, we're doing about what's going on with the rest of the state, but the picture around the state isn't necessarily as good as we'd like it to be. Um, and so here, the, the blue represents the number of our students who are meeting or exceeding uh, proficiency expectations. And we, we've got our, some work ahead of us, and we've, we've begun that uh, and excited for the the math team, vertical alignment teams that are, are meeting to talk about curriculum, uh, especially how one grade feeds into another. While we may have been doing great work in individual grades with our programs, uh, we haven't done enough communicating between grade eight and grade nine, grade nine and grade 10, so that each year we're building on the successes and strengths of the previous year uh, and not being redundant, but are really tackling students' growth needs. So. Yeah. With, with that said, when you look at the, the ninth grade scores, some of what they're being tested on is algebra. Uh, and students are just in their mm -hmm. third week of algebra when they're taking this test. So 
their algebra scores don't look great unless they took algebra in middle school. And the same is true in the 10th grade that students have been tested on geometry, but most of our, about three quarters of our students don't touch geometry as a distinct subject until they get to 10th grade. So we should see some improvement even throughout the course of the year because of the nature of what's being tested. Awesome. I think the summary is there's generally good momentum and we're excited to continue that. And there's plans in place to improve the areas that, that are lagging. I think we were lucky you were in person as much as we were. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Any questions about that? All right. That brings us to our student support budget slash budget presentation. So this is like, um, as you remember, we focused on just giving a, a focus on personnel and the, and the current function codes that correspond with each one of these departments. Um, this is just a first draft of this. I think you're going to see this look a little different next month. And then next month, you're going to get the rest of your personnel, just as a reminder. And, and by next month, we're going to be starting to look for some more firm firmer direction for you just around, you know, yes, we want you to continue to focus on increasing programming and pathways, mm -hmm. right? But we want to make certain that that doesn't come at the cost of intervention. I just, I'm not that we're doing that. I'm just, I'm just giving you as an example, right? Mm -hmm. So as we start to paint this picture, the way we're going about budgeting is the same way we did last year is around if we want to add something new, we're trying to find a way to pay for it, just so you know, right? So we're mm -hmm. trading out instead of just looking to add on. Um, and so what you'll see here is that even last, what we have done this current fiscal year is we traded out a guidance counselor who left. We felt like we were going to struggle to find a high quality guidance counselor at the Bethel campus. Um, at middle, uh, well, uh, we had someone leave here in Royalton we maneuvered a uh, guidance counselor, Nicole Lamoth, over here at the high school, um, which I think you know has, has worked exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. And what that resulted in is us deciding we really felt like we needed pathways at the middle school program to build those skills to get students prepared to engage in pathways at the high school. So we made a decision to bring on a, a, another pathways coordinator. Mm -hmm. We're still wrestling as an admin team, mm -hmm. and I think the admin team will continue to work on this with their student support team around, do we have all the positions the way we, we want them? Or is there any more tweaking that needs to happen? And I would say that part, part of the, I think the concern of us being able to answer that question right now is that we really haven't fully got up to staff and got everyone doing what we need them, what we envision them to do, right? And there's multiple reasons for that short staff, some people are taking on responsibilities that weren't originally going to be assigned. So that's one of the things we're still wrestling with. So I would say this is a, a first draft attempt to capture what I think the principals are looking toward in the direction of a focus around the budget. Mm -hmm. And if I was, as the superintendent, I would say to you, I think it's maintaining intervention, making certain that we continue to build on our system, but also looking to continue to um, ensure that we can provide high quality pathway mm -hmm. programming. And so that's where we're at kind of as priorities right now. Um, you can see based on this first, this first um, attempt that we are up in student support, you'll see the FTEs and intervention are up. That it, you'll see a corresponding move in universal instruction um, that will increase some FTE. So right now we budgeted for some teachers to be universal instructors, right? Like in the elementary grades where we maybe didn't have a need based on enrollment. So okay. they're now doing some intervention is what they're doing. And so again, as we start to project out class sizes, things of that nature, those numbers could fluctuate, but right now that's where we're at FTE wise. And that's K through 12. Uh, um, sorry, pre-K through 12 around intervention um, because we have some pieces of teachers at the high school level too who are doing intervention during their, their instructional day. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else to add, guys? That's good. 
Correct. questions about this, uh, I think it'll become a lot clearer in November when you see the rest of your personnel um, and start to get a sense. Um, if the board felt like they had a, a strong direction or focus around like a policy statement that you wanted to give us, that would be helpful as we're building this next, you know, draft two, which has student support and the rest of your instructional staff um, so that, you know, we're not all of a sudden going in a different direction in November. So if there's some people that have some strong opinions now, it would be just good to hear them. Mm -hmm. Any Anyone in the grid with opinions or want to to weigh in on a direction as Jamie just asked? Shannon? I have a just a really basic question. So I'm looking at, for example, the co-curricular director line. What's included in that? Because it says one FTE, but I'm thinking that's a lot more than an FTE. Yeah, it's all the other function codes. Tara, do you want to explain how those are just rolled up? So would that include like transportation for She's athletics? Right now, okay. Yeah. Yes. So under the co-curricular director, it's a 1.0 FTE for that position, but it includes currently all the object codes that are within the co-curricular. So that's going to be your transportation, your coaches, your sporting events, uh, materials, supplies, uniforms, any of that stuff. Um, a lot of that hasn't been adjusted yet, but we rolled them up together last year. So we continued that process this year. So it's anything that's under, if you look at your actual budget from 22, it's anything that's under the function 1400. So thank you. And so Shannon, in December though, you will get what you're used to with all the budget lines. So we try to keep it more focused on personnel, which is a big driver of your budget, um, and a focus on like, what is the direction of the district, the first two budget drafts, and then we got into more of the nitty gritty in December and January before you approved. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm seeing that we have two SAPs to be funded by ESSER and two clinicians to be funded by ESSER. My, I guess my only concern about that is what's our plan to continue to provide those services beyond when ESSER money goes away because my suspicion is that student need is going to exist well beyond when we have ESSER funds. Well, <laughs> no, it's a great question. And so I think if you said to me, Jamie, what's your strategy? I think it's a three pronged approach right. is one that we will still have some Medicaid funds and things of that nature to cover okay. them. Um, and we use Medicaid funds now to cover nurses mm -hmm. and other districts and things. So we do know that we have Medicaid funds available. Um, two is that my hope is as we continue to work hard to increase tuition students, we're going to increase our revenue. Okay. Um, so that is part of how I'm hoping to cover some of that increased revenue. And then three, I hope as our system strengthens that we will need less intervention. Mm -hmm. We do have a lot of intervention. Um, and the principals have heard me say this over and over, our interventionists are doing great. But I would say the, the level of need right now around universal, around intervention, I think should decrease over time. And we're talking about three years from now. So I do think we can, again, trade out some things to help cover some of those costs. But we have talked about the need um, to ensure too that we're building in some things in the budget um to ensure that we are preparing ourselves that it's not all of a sudden just ripped out from under us okay. and so i think as we're getting more direction from the board and the community about what they can or cannot support that will certainly adjust what we'll actually be able to build in this upcoming year okay. um, that's what we discussed even just today perfect is that concept yeah, I also really support the idea of building flexible pathways. I appreciate that that work is undergoing, underway. Sorry, you're undergoing that work. Um, I have a question about the co-curricular director's budget. Um, you were mentioning a lot about like um, athletics. Is that also put into like performing arts as well, or how is that like split up? Or Yes, the, the performing arts budget is a part of the co-curricular budget, although 
the teachers who support the chorus program, the band program, they come out of their own categories and sheet music and instrument repair and lessons comes out of different line items in the budget that are separate. So we, we still have a music program that's part of the academic program, but the after school part falls under the co-curricular line. Okay, so more, so more of like, um, like a spring musical that we have or drama clubs or something? Yeah, we pull the money for those out of the co-curricular okay. budget and not the music budget. Good question. Good question, Grace. <laughs> All right, thank you. Any other questions about that very first draft of the budget that we're getting to glimpse? All right, our next um, action slash possible action item is for board clerk. Yeah, so this is Lisa's role. It was Lisa's role, yeah. Yep. Um, and so, I did give you guys that handy dandy chart about roles of the board. Yep. Uh, this is really about ensuring that the minutes get posted within mm -hmm. five days. Um, it is they do assist us with our annual report, right? Mm -hmm. Making certain that that gets taken care of. Although I will say that your your clerk of the board who certifies your results and everything, Pam does a great job Pam, assisting right. us, right? And so for us, really, it is about and Tara, jump in if they do more, but. Uh, at least on my end, it's ensuring the minutes get posted, right? Like our warnings getting up and posted in appropriate places. Those are the <laughs> biggest responsibilities that we're looking for in this role here at the board level. The, the thing. Yes, if your clerk isn't doing the notes, your note taker would then turn the notes over from each, the minutes from each of your meetings over to your clerk. The clerk reviews them, signs off on them, and then submits them to Christy, as Jamie said, within the five days so that they can get posted then to make sure that all your legal postings are where they need to be and all your warnings are where they need to be. And also in some boards, the clerk also is the one who writes responses to correspondence. So those types of roles. So we don't, I, I don't think the clerk has ever physically made sure that they're getting posted. I mean, Christy emails them to the town clerks, et cetera, and the offices of the schools, correct? You guys are, yeah, you, you're, other towns, we've had to have them start checking because they okay. weren't getting posted, right. which is concerning when you assume they are and right. we're a big SU and they're not. But right. I would say in general, in your towns, that it doesn't seem to have been an issue. It has been in some of my other districts. So I have asked okay. that board clerk to just go look and confirm. Okay. Um, just to ensure that we're, you know, that we're abiding by open meeting laws. But yeah. I'm, I'm willing to fill that role if nobody else wants to do it through the end of my term. Which is in five years, she said. No, which is in five months, she said. <laughs> <laughs> I'll nominate Lisa Floyd to be board clerk. All right. Good thing she's taking the notes. <laughs> okay. Is there a second for that nomination? I'll second that. Thank you. All in favor, do we have to do that if nobody else? Okay, all in favor of Lisa Floyd being the clerk um, until March, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, I guess I'm the clerk again. Thank you. All right. Um, Resignations and new hires. Um, so as far as resignations go, are we good? Yeah. Okay. Um, we did uh, have a resignation um, of our teaching staff. Galen Hugebart's actually going to retire. Okay. Um, and it's going to be a formal notice that she's going to retire January 28th will be her last day and that she has an application for early retirement which will be submitted effective february 1st so galen's going to be retiring she's had a, a very long tenure with us uh, she's impacted a ton of students and families she served on the pto as well i know for a long time and is, is really a valued uh, member of our educational community so it's really with a heavy heart that i bring this to you so um, Galen has, has announced that is my understanding. I was looking at Andrew because I don't like to do this until her colleagues know and it sounds like her colleagues are aware. 
Um, and so I bring that to you. And we will start the process tomorrow okay. of uh, looking for uh, a replacement for that, that position. Do we need to accept that risk that or? Um, I would like you to accept it just because we're in the actual midst okay. of the contract. Yep. Yep. With regrets and wishing her the best in retirement. So I would entertain an, a motion to accept that with, with regret. I'd make a motion to accept it, uh, accept the resignation with regret and wish her well on retirement. I'll second that. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Any I'm going to abstain. Can you tell me who resigned? I just went through a dead spot. I'm so sorry. No, it's all right, Ashton. Galen Hugerbart has announced her resignation effective uh, January okay. 28th, uh, and she's going to retire effective February 1. Thank you. Sorry about that. No, it's all right. Did, so are you saying I or are you still abstaining? So I, I'm, I'm, I'm an I. With okay. okay. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. I do wish her well in her retirement. Do we have any public comments? Oh, just a minute. Just oh. to, to give the board an update, oh. it's not a licensed professional, so it doesn't need action from the board, but we were able to secure an admin <coughs> assistant. Oh, nice. Which is really good news. Um, and do you guys want to just talk about that, our candidate? That's started and started onboarding. And this is on the Royalton campus. Are you talking or are you eating? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm at a bad time. Give me 20 seconds. Um, you go ahead. It's okay. I, yeah, we have a, we have a, had a hard time finding a lot of candidates. Uh, so... Um, and right now I'm spacing on her name. Is that so good? Fred, Bridget, do we? Bridget Fortier. So she. Um, you want me to do this? Yeah. yeah thank no, you. no, no, Bridget. So Bridget will be campus. with us. Bridget Fournier? Bridget Fournier. Okay. So she will be with us daily until about one fifteen every day. Um, so she's partially doing student, and she's had a lot of experience before this, um, being in receptionist roles, and she already has kind of hit the ground running, being very helpful with people and. Um, I think she's a perfect fit, actually. All right, perfect. <coughs> Her exciting. last name spelled F O R T N E R. I don't know if you were writing that down. Oh, Fortier. Fortier, okay. F O R T N E R. F O R T N E R. Yeah, I totally got it wrong. So she just just moved to town um, because of a partner in uh, at the law school. So. Awesome. Thank you. And she's been here three weeks, four weeks. Now. So yeah, we're. I think we're really excited. Um, I'll say you know I interview everybody that we bring on board, and I, I found my discussion to be uh, a really positive one. I feel like it's a real good fit and has the personality to really mm -hmm. succeed um, in the position. So I'm feeling really good about it. Fabulous. All right, that brings us to public comment. <coughs> Peggy Ainsworth says, raise your hand. Okay, um, I'm speaking on behalf of the uh, BCA. That's my other hat. Um, and just having, just giving notice or suggestions or looking for us to discuss sometime along before town meeting and our budget votes as a school board we have the choice if we want to do mailing ball mail ballots to everybody when it comes time to vote. The uh, local BCA and so on would handle everything, but we would be responsible for the uh, expenses of the postage and all of that stuff. So uh, the town clerk wanted me to bring that up so that we could discuss it sometime. So that was my comment. Okay. So we would be responsible for the mailing ex expense, et cetera. Um, yeah. So that's worth noting. I think this is for yep. just the election of officers, though, Peggy, correct? 
because the, um, the law is going to run out sunset in regards to your actual your vote. So my understanding is this would just be for your election of officers. That could be. I'm. I was assuming probably the budget might be in there too. I've. I haven't I so. read the whole thing over thoroughly. But I was assuming because because we we vote for budget by Australian ballot too, don't we? Only I thought only during the pandemic Which when sunset we didn't soon. have our meeting, and that will sunset very soon. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I will follow up with Pam Brown to you, the clerk of the board, because she had reached out to me about this, and I said, to, you know, from the Bethel side to Peggy, um, and I said that mm -hmm. I would be following up with you folks, but she indicated to me it was just for the election of officers. Um, okay. Component, but I will double check on that too with legal. Yeah. Okay. And how is the town doing their balloting? Um, I have not heard anything about doing any uh, about mailing out ballots to everybody. So I have not heard anything. I know we have a meeting coming up sometime, but I, again, I haven't paid attention as yeah. to when. Well, I think my inclination would be to do what the town does, you know, like if the town's doing their town meeting stuff and positions by mail in, then maybe it would make sense for us to include in that. But if they're not, then just I, hope the two towns do the same thing. That's true. Right. I know Bethel doesn't intend to. As well as doesn't intend to do any mail out. I don't believe so. That was the inclination I got. At least when Tam called, but I can double check that. <laughs> Yeah, this is Shannon. I agree on the officer piece to do what the town does probably makes sense, but <clears throat> I think it's a bigger discussion about whether or not we vote the budget from the floor since that's traditionally what we've always done. Well, unless we're provided by statute the opportunity, right. and I don't think you're going to be, by the way, until right. you vote by, from the floor to move your vote to Australian ballot, we're going to be required by law to hold it from the right. floor. Right, yes. Okay. And I'm pretty certain that sunset's effective December 31st. Right. That's what I was thinking yeah. too. So, so people could still have their absentee ballots, but the mass mailings that happened during that first spring of the pandemic probably would not happen. Okay. That brings us to other. I'm not hearing any other. Um, so executive session personnel? Just me. There's no one me. Okay. I hand things back over to Andrew. <laughs> I think I'll let you finish. Okay, okay. I'm happy to finish. Thank you all. Let's, uh, oh, we need a motion to enter executive session. Yeah, yeah, make a motion to enter executive session for a personnel matter, uh, inviting in the superintendent. Okay, and Andrew seconded that. Perfect. <laughs> oh, it's it's so confusing. All these different online meeting platforms. <laughs> yeah. You Zoom during the day, and Google meets at night. Yeah. Well, if it's a doctor's visit, then it's doxy me or something like that. And if it's some other visit, it's some other Zooming platform. The, the conference uh, mic is muted still. All right, we're unmuted. So uh, what we were going to say, what we said was we have the White River Valley High School Performing Arts Center on December. Also the RFQ for the energy audit that's wrapped up. We've only had one person apply. So I do need to get a waiver again from the agency of ag because we only have one person apply. That shouldn't be a problem. 
So we'll be looking to move forward and take action next month on awarding the audit, and then the audit will start underway swiftly. So that's good news. And then once the audit's completed, they'll give us that information to inform how we want to go about that process. So I'm hoping that they're actually going to hopefully start doing the audit. The plan was be to hopefully maybe complete some of them before even the holiday break. Awesome. Um, do we need to add the plowing to the... And the plowing bit. Yep. For November. Anything else for the future agendas? Of course, budget's going to be on there again every month. Of now. course. Yep. All right. Um, our next meeting will be Tuesday, November 16th at 6 p.m. on the Bethel campus. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move. Second. All right, and we adjourn at 712. Have a good night, everyone. All right, good night. Good night.